Hey everyone, Alex here for Bright Dog Academy. If you'd like me to personally answer any questions you may have about your dog, be sure to head over to brightdog.com where you can learn about my online training program, plus pick up a copy of the official Bright Dog Academy ebook. Teaching your dog recall or come, one of the most important commands because you need to have a way to reliably get your dog back to you when he's you know off leisure or runs away. So before we get into teaching our dogs to come, there are some rules that we need to go over. Rule number one is that whenever you call your dog back to you, no matter what happened, you always have to praise them. Now, let me give you an example when this might be difficult, okay? We are at home and we call our dog in from outside. Dog, come. And the dog comes running inside, but he had muddy, muddy feet. And as he's running in the house, he's trapping mud all over the place. He jumped on the couch. He knocked over a lamp. But he came to us. Your instinct might be go, what are you doing? Why'd you do that? You got mud all over, you broke the lamp. But if you do that, he is going to respond to the last thing you said. You told him to come and went now and he did. He came to you. And now you're getting angry at him. And he's gonna go, Well that wasn't very that wasn't a good idea on my part. I did exactly what she said and I got I got yelled at. So next time I'm not going to to listen. So what you should be doing is, even though he came into the house and knocked over the lamp and had tracked mud all over the couch, you have to go, good boy, good job, because he listened. The last thing you said was, dog, come, he listened. Doesn't matter what happened on his way to you, he listened, all right? So it's very important that if your dog listens, no matter what happened in between, you have to praise him. Now, we also want to be careful that we never ask our dog to come to us and do the recall and then follow it with something negative. Because again, we don't want any negative associations to that word. Here is a perfect example. We're at the dog park, it's time to leave. Dog, come. They come over, what do we do? We leash him up and then we leave. Well, I see this so often and I also see so often people having to chase their dogs through the dog park because the dog has been trained that when I'm at the dog park and I hear that word and I go back to them, it means fun is over, play is over. So instead, what we do is we separate the action of leaving from the command of come or recall. And we do that by asking for three commands. So here's what happens with my dog when we're at the dog park. My dog's running around playing, having a great time. It's time to leave. Max, come. He runs over to me. That's a good boy. Now I ask him for three commands. Sit, good boy. He does it. Down, good boy. He does it. Stand, good boy. Now what we do is I leash him up and then we leave. So by asking for those three commands, we have separated the negative you know, um, pairing, the negative action, from that word. All right? So this is very important. If you're gonna follow up this command with something your dog doesn't like, putting him in a bath, um, getting in the car, some dogs have phobies of cars, we never say this word and then do something negative afterwards that your dog doesn't like. If you're, if you're going to have to, ask him for three things to separate that behavior, right? Next rule with teaching our dogs to come is we never say this word. We're gonna pick a word, all right? Pick your recall word. Whatever the word is, I use come, but pick whatever word you are going to use that you can be consistent with and that is not going to slip out on accident because whatever this word is that you choose, you're only going to say it in the beginning until we've proved your dog knows this when your dog is on the leash. So the word I use is come, which means when I was training my dog to respond to this word, I would say anything else when he was off leash. I would say, here, let's go, hurry up, just call his name. But I never said that word unless he was on leash. Because what we're trying to do here is have a 100% compliance that when he, the dog hears the word, that they have to run back to us. And actually, come is more than running back. It's that they have to run back to us and then sit in front. The command is not complete unless they sit. And here's why. My dog is, we're at the beach, and I say, Max, come, and he comes running to me, running to me, and then there's a bird behind me, and he goes right by me to get the bird. <laughs> well, technically he listened to me, he did come, but 
he didn't know when the command ended. So by having the command end with a sit, it just lets the dog know that the command is over. Plus, it's easier because then the dog is there, you can grab the collar, you can leash him up if you need, if it's an emergency. It's better control. So, the recaller come means run back to me and sit, right? Now, you'll see in the next step why, why we practice with this command on leash. Because again, it's going to guarantee that we have 100% compliance. We're never going to let the dog fail at this command. So, in the meantime, while you're training the dog on leash to respond to this word, don't say this word off leash. Because every time you say your recall word and the dog ignores you, you've ruined about a hundred good repetitions. All right? So these are the rules for come. You're going to pick the word that you want to use. Be very consistent with not saying it while your dog is off leash until we've proved your dog knows it. So step one with teaching our dogs recall or come is actually really simple. The whole process of teaching come is simple. It just comes down to practice. So first thing you're going to want is a four foot to um, six foot leash and then whatever you want to attach that to, either just a regular collar or harness. I like to use a harness um, for starting out because you're going to be gently pulling the dog and it's just a little bit easier to uh, pull from the body rather than the neck. No choke chains, no prong collars. If you're using those, throw them away. Go get a regular flat buckle collar that's made of nylon or leather or get a harness. All right? We don't want to use anything that has any association with pain because the whole thing with teaching our dogs recall and come is we want them to enjoy coming back to us. And if there's pain involved, it's doing the opposite. Okay? So we get our four foot or six foot leash, we hook it up onto the collar or harness. And what we're going to do then is we are going to take the leash and we're going to let it out as far as it goes. And our dog is going to be over here on his leash, paying attention to something else. And all we're going to do is we're going to say the word once, whatever your recall word is, mine is come. We say the word and then what we do is we walk backwards. Right. This is very important. Movement is very exciting to dogs. So when I start moving, dogs naturally want to follow. So we're, we have the dog all the way out on the leash, we say the dog's name, we start to move backwards. Or sorry, we say the dog's name, we say the word come, we start to move backwards. Usually the dog will naturally just start to come towards us because of the movement and because we got his attention. If he doesn't, that's fine. We very gently pull on the leash and we and we kind of reel him in until he's right in front of us. So when you move back, you'll take like two or three steps, two or three steps back, we reel the dog in and we get him right in front of us. And then what we do, we don't say sit, but we just use the hand signal for sit. So if your dog doesn't know sit, start working on that, please. And we just use the hand signal for sit, all right? And that way, we chain the behaviors together. That when you hear the recall word come, it means stop what you're doing, run to me, and sit. And then we practice again. We let the dogs leash out. We let them smell something, get interested in something. We say their name, dog, come. We take two or three steps backwards. Hopefully, they come towards us. If not, that's OK. That's why we have the leash. We gently pull them in to the right in front. If they sit automatically, perfect. Give them the treat. Give them a treat for that. If they don't sit automatically, then we just give them the hand signal and then the treat, okay? So this is step one. All you're basically doing is getting the dog used to hearing that word and that the word means run towards me and sit. And every time you do, something good's gonna happen. You're gonna get a treat, all right? That's step one. The next step with teaching our dogs recall or come is teaching them that that word means to come back to us no matter where they are. And this is what people have the biggest issue with teaching a dog's recall is when there's distractions because we don't practice the correct way with the distractions. So what we're going to do is we're going to stay with our dogs on a four to six foot leash. We're not going to go any longer than that. And we're going to start adding distractions. In the, the past uh, step, you just practice at home and practice in low settings of distractions. All right. 
what we're going to do is we're going to follow this order. Once your dog is good at home, you're going to go out and practice in the front yard or in the backyard. Somewhere where now there's new sounds, new smells, people, cars, there's more distraction. And you're going to stay at this distance. And you're going to practice the same way as we did in step one. The dog is fully or, you know, away from you on the leash as far as he can go. Say the dog's name, dog, come. And if he comes to you, you don't have to pull at all. The dog runs to you and sits. You don't have to give him the hand signal. If he does that 10 out of 10 times perfectly, 10 times in a row, then you can move on to the next level of distraction. Next level of distraction, we'll, we will go to a people park. Same thing, dog, come. If, you, if he turns and runs right back to you and sits without a hand signal, 10 out of 10 times, you can go to the next level of distraction. Odds are this isn't going to happen. You're going to have to practice. You're going to go to the park. You're going to say, dog, come. He's going to completely ignore you. So that's OK. We just practice the same way we did in step one. Dog, come. He ignores you. So you take two to three steps back. You gently reel him in. And you give him the hand signal for sit. Once he does, treat. All right? So remember, this is all four to six feet. Front yard, park. Once we are good there, then we will go to a, let's go to a pet store. And you practice at a pet store where there's other animals, there's other dogs, lots of smells. Man, those are great places for distractions. Again, 10 out of 10 times. Final test is at the dog park. Actually, let's, let's do this. Outside the dog park first is, is one, um, one part, outside, and then inside. All right, so you, you got two levels here. So when your dog is perfect outside the dog park, 10 out of 10 times, then you go inside and you practice on leash 10 out of 10 times. And again, this is all at four to six feet. Now, you're inside the dog park 10 out of 10 times in a row, you say, dog, come. And without you having to reel him in, without a hand signal for sit, he runs back to you. You give him a treat and reward the behavior. Great. So that means your dog now knows what this word means, or whatever word you use, come. They know what that means now. At the highest level of distraction, they can do that reliably from four to six feet. All right? Dogs don't generalize. So now that your dog is perfect at that, at that uh, level of distraction, at this distance, now what we do is we up the level um, and distance that our dog has to do it from. So you're going to go out and you're going to go by a 10 to 12 foot leash. And you're going to do this whole process all over again. Practice in the front yard at 12 feet until he's perfect. Then you're going to practice at the park till he's perfect. Then the pet store till he's perfect. Then the dog park till he's perfect. And you don't move on to the next step until your dog has it down perfectly. And by perfectly, that means 10 out of 10 times in a row, you say the dog's name, the word, come, and he runs back to you and sits in front. Not once do you have to pull him in, not once do you have to give him the hand signal for sit. This is not going to happen right away. Absolutely not. This is a process. It's going to take time. You might be at, 10, at you know, 10 to 12 feet and working in the front yard for two to three weeks. And after two to three weeks, you finally get that 10 out of 10. And then next time, you, and then you finally get to the park. And now you're at the park for a couple of weeks practicing. The first time you move to a new level of distraction, you're going to have to pull them in. And that's fine. That's why we use a leash. Because we're guaranteeing that our dog is going to, to listen to this command. Does this take time and energy and effort? Absolutely. But you know what? This is the most important command to practice. Next, this, next to leave it are, and drop it, these three are the life-saving commands. When your dog gets something in his mouth that could kill him, he needs to know to drop it. When your dog is going for something that could kill him, leave it is going to prevent him from picking it up in his mouth in the first place. When you're walking your dog down the freeway, or not the freeway, sorry, down a busy street, and there's a busy intersection, and your leash breaks, your recall word or come is going to get your dog back to you and save his life, okay? So, very important step for come. Um, this is how you practice don't move on to different distances until you've perfected that one distance at the highest level of distraction. And this can go on forever. 10, 12 feet, once you finally get down to here, 
go another 5 to 10 feet, and then another 5 to 10 feet. But don't move on to a new level of distraction until you've perfected the previous one. So to practice come, first thing I want to do is get some distance between my dog and I. So if your dog's smelling something, that's fine. Otherwise, set him up. Throw a toy, throw a treat, something that you can do to get some distance. So I'm going to take a treat, I'm going to throw it. Max is going to go for it, then I'm going to just practice come. So a treat. So I throw a treat over there to get some distance. Now I say his name, the word, walk backwards. Max, come. Walk back. Nice and close. Good boy. And treat. I'm going to do it again to get some distance. I'll throw a treat. Let him go it away from me. Max, come. He doesn't do it, so I gently pull, 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 and he sits. Good boy. Let's try one more time. Max, come. Good boy. Perfect. Good job. That's come. Buddy's already away from me. I'm going to say his name in the word. Buddy, come. He doesn't do it, so I gently pull him in. Pull him nice and close, and then I get him to sit. Good boy. Good. And then I let him go out again, and we do it again. Thank you.